Well, it was like any other parent who comes and seeks help. And uh, as a pediatrician, it's your duty that, that you should listen to the parents very carefully and believe in whatever they say. Did you feel he was doing something different, extra? No, he, what he was doing is that every parent should do, but uh, he had incredible energy and I think he's extremely intelligent. And uh, that, that led to his quest that there was something wrong with his child, which was mm -hmm. wrong with his child. And he persevered the medical literature very, very carefully and in great details, which not many people do. And partly because I think he was resourced, he had access to internet, that has helped him, I guess. And he also analyzed the results very, very critically himself. That is unusual. Well, that's, well I, that's maybe the way I practice medicine and I always believe in what parents tell me and I take their word very, very seriously. So it's a, the way you practice your field, that's I will say. I will take anybody else like him, but he came across as a genius, I would say that, yeah. Oh, you mean the patient or you mean the... Well, no, not, not, not exactly. No, there are parents who go to great lengths, uh, but I think in my career of 25, 30 years, he was the first one to go to that detail. Of great details in terms of understanding the physiology of, of disease, pathology of the disease, and taking all the pains to take his son to all over the world, I would say, and take all the chances. So he has been, for me, he has been a great inspiration and a great example of for what length the parents can go to help their children. Do you think this would be the relationship between patients and doctors? Well, he's, I would say he certainly has strengthened my views about listening about patients and I'm sure my colleague will also accept his views that these kind of people are there and uh, their help should be taken seriously because they can only help us in solving these problems. Well, I wouldn't call it third world. I think that all these illnesses are equally distributed all over the world. Uh, the access to the investigations is limited and that differentiates into first world or third world. But uh, the diseases are always there. They're everywhere, I would say. They're not restricted to this part of the world. There may be slightly higher incidence because of the, our cultural practices here or the marriages in the relations but otherwise these diseases are seen worldwide.